welcome to the Arcade Saga. My name is Ilkjan Wiersma, also known as EJ. Today I have another request a video coming from Wanda. She asked if I could do a care guide on my Cadleas. And it was almost like you read my mind because I had them in my schedule for doing an update on them. Just to look at all my Cadlea and Cadlea types. So, and yeah, a, a bit of a care guide fitting in the video uh, works very well, I think. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you for the request. I really enjoy the request. So if you are watching this video and you have one, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I really like to know what types of video you like and, and maybe you want to do some updates on specific plans you saw in, in the videos, maybe from a few years back. If I still have them, uh, we can uh, do that. I have a um, request for my um, Boba Phylum Arcus, also uh, on Sidiums. Um, those are coming, so I'm not forgetting that but those are coming. It's just a, a time uh, issue. I uh, need a little bit more time for making these videos, which is not a problem. Uh, but sometimes I just don't have the time, so that's why I'm skipping them here and there. So it may take a few weeks. Nonetheless, I really enjoy the request, so uh, keep them coming. Uh, like I said, today I'm going to talk about my Cadillac types. For me, it's a very interesting type of uh, family of orchids. Um, I could class them as the ones that I maybe struggle the most with. Generally speaking, they are doing okay, but as you might know, I grow in self-watering. I use pumice mostly for it. I have my links in the video description if you want to check the pumice out. But um, what I found is, especially with the warmer growers and also the Cadleas, I did address it also in my video about the Dendrobium phenoliopsis, same type of problem, is that I in winter it's just about too cold for them. So what happens is with uh, quite a lot of them, they lose their roots or parts of the parts of the roots that are uh, in contact with the water, because the water is generally gets a little bit colder than the surrounding temperature. In winter, I have it at least 18 degrees at night, which I think it's 64 Fahrenheit if I remember correctly. But the water goes down a little bit more, so. Sometimes it's about 14 or 15 uh, degrees Celsius, which probably is something around 60 Fahrenheit. And that is just a bit too cold for them. So I am uh, doing little projects with these guys. What I did and what I'm doing with them is uh, I put some up in uh, net pots. You will see those in a minute. I also have the more original uh, orchid pots, the translucent ones, where I burn in more holes. And what I also start doing is in the outer pots, the black pots, also a few holes, four or five holes, just above the reservoir. So I hope that I have the maximum of air coming in. First of all, being the air warmer uh, than the uh, water, like I just discussed. Plus, um, these types of orchids really enjoy some extra air around the root, so they really need the air. So I don't want to change the setup. I don't. I think I don't have to. But it's a bit of a puzzle, like I like to refer to it, which I enjoy. I see progress, so we will address that as well. I still have a few that are not doing very well, uh, but I have progress. So that's what I'm doing, and I thought I'm starting this in the intro, so it does make more sense uh, uh, if we're going to look uh, closely at the orchid, so I can uh, address that, uh, what I'm trying with the specific orchid in general. And uh, meanwhile, um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about the care. First thing is that uh, behind me is south facing, so the rest is uh, west facing. So I, I class this greenhouse as a southwest facing. That means that I have quite a lot of sun. If we do get sun, I'm from the Netherlands, we do not get that much sun. But if we have, this greenhouse warms up very quickly, even in winter. So that's absolutely perfect. Personally, I love uh, spring and summer uh, way better than winter. I don't like the cold and the wet weather. Anyhow, so that's that's beautiful. Um, I really enjoy it. In summer, it goes. Uh, it can be become quite warm, but these are, generally speaking, like the warmth and uh, the light. So I give them quite some light. I have them next to my vendors. This area of the greenhouse do, uh, does receive the most light. So uh, that's. Uh, uh, a little bit of care guide, and the rest is the same, so I don't feed them much. We will address that a little bit uh, uh, further on in this video. So I'm going to grab uh, the camera and I will uh, let you see uh, what I have, what's, what types of cat layers. So let's go. 
So let's go. And yes, I'm a little bit too short, so I have this uh, little step stay here. So I wanted to start with the top shelf and then go down and then pick, uh, grab the next one. So let's do this. I'm going to be a little bit taller now. Whoops, here we go. So here I have my Alelia types. And these Alelias do not mind the colder temperatures as much in the winter. And I think I grow these quite well in these conditions because the plants do not mind. So it's not, I don't uh, do something magical to them, but I have them in bloom as we saw earlier in, uh, in this video. And some were some first time bloomers, my striata, and I have a work harp striati here, back here. Both of them sadly are, uh, I do not have the right name for it, but I still keep the text, the original text, but they, they looked up completely different. Nonetheless, I really uh, love them. And as you can see, this one is beautiful, uh, growing a new growth. We have a fairly nice cane here, and that's the first one that started to bloom. Same goes for the Wilkhausen eye, which is not, <laughs> but you can see it's a beautiful new growth there. And this is how it looks on uh, on top of the pot, let's see, this is one, I have fairly some room in between the inner pot and the outer pot, more air like we discussed, and this has the holes, you see, there are the holes, and we have some roots here, and I'm waiting of course for the new roots to get over here, but as you can see, more holes, so that's just uh, a uh, little bit of me trying to get a setup better for them. And this one didn't bloom yet, so I'm not completely sure if this is the right one. There's the tag, but it's doing okay. It's in a similar state. Well, this growth is a little bit bigger, as you can see. Maybe this uh, this will grow, uh, bloom, I'm sorry. This one didn't, the previous one. It, it should be big enough, so who knows? That is that one. Then I have my Tenebrosa over here. Well, that one is really enjoying it, I think. We even have some area roots going over here. This one seems to be a bit dried up. And a lot of new roots, some branching going on. And let's have a look inside of the pot. So yeah, this one is a net pot. And I think this one enjoys it. Like I said, a little bit more extra air. Then I have a no ID, I call it green pink. It's doing okay. Okay, but this one never did very well for me. It has some beautiful leaves, but you can see this cane is, uh, well, it's just a bit bigger than the last one, but the one before that is way bigger. So yeah, this one was of uh, one of those that just kept on uh, dumping the roots. So I have it in a net pot and I have holes on the outer pot. So who knows, but it's just starting to root and I don't want to lift it because I'm afraid I'm going to break some. Um, I can try if I can get it in. Now you can see it's stuck, so I'm not going to borrow it. Uh, back here, this one over here in the back, um, maybe can get this one out of the way. Yeah, there it is, this one. It's my uh, green hairy pig. It had two directions of growth, but this one just didn't make a new growth yet. There is, looks like an eye over here. Who knows, who knows. Doing fine, and it blooms for me as well. Maybe you saw it in one of the updates. So here we go. This is a no ID from Landsbergen. Starting some new roots. Did have a few, I just repotted it. In fairly big pumice, and again, quite some room between the inner pot and the outer pot. So those are living up here, of this uh, highest shelf. So they're quite close to the roof. They really enjoy the extra light. Fairly light greenish colored leaves. That's that's what, we, what you want, especially with the Lelias. They really enjoy it. So let's go down. And here we have some very pretty blooms. You may have seen them in my last update. This is the Showtime. And this one started as well blooming. This is the uh, Ancelia Vola Jared Canary Orange. Looks a lot like the uh, Golden Peacock. Very, very similar, which we still will see in the, more in the end of the video. It's on the other side of the shelving. <laughs> Just repotted. I split it. I did give a piece of this plant to uh, Inse. Um, but it's really fine again. So that's, that this one uh, didn't have any problems with the setup. Even during winter. 
And this is my Brazzavola Cucalata. And it's still in bloom. I think they are getting a little bit darker, but still quite beautiful. It's a very young plant, as you can see. So that is over here. And then we have this one. This is... Well, um, these, these are a fairly new... Uh, this is a fairly new cane over here. So finally, finally, it's getting some size to it. I had this for years. It's the uh, little stars. I'm sorry for... Uh, it's a bit crowded here. The little stars. Yeah, this one kept dumping the roots. So that's why this plant didn't really uh, grow much bigger. But it does now, as you can see. So who knows, who knows. I might finally get it in bloom because... Let me quickly check the repotting date. It's from 20. So there's four years and I, I might even have it before that. Well, it still looks like a fairly young plant. So it's not really enjoying uh, the setup yet. Well, actually, I think it's starting to enjoy it. Let's put it like that. More air. Yeah, some weeds there. I have these weeds constantly. <laughs> And this is new growth as well. Looking bigger. So, some progress over there. Next to it, we have a similar situation. Also holes in the pot like the uh, little stars as well. More air. Net pot. This is the Yirek Fire Star. I had it in bloom. And here's a new growth. Putting up some roots. There's some moss. Some moss is... Uh, some is a bit dead, so I should take that out. Moss is a beautiful indication like this one. It's a bit yellow. It's not, not a good sign. I think it's a little bit too warm now. But um, if your moss is growing like beautifully on this one, well, the showtime, that means it's nice and moist. Even the top layer, then you have the moss. But if it gets a little bit too warm, too dry, it doesn't like it. And this is, this is exactly what I am doing. I'm not giving them a full reservoir anymore. I, I try to... Uh, try to get a general feel of how much they drink in a week. So I'm not completely doing a wet dry cycle, but just a little less water and with more air. So maybe that's why the moss is not completely happy on here. I take it off because even if it's growing and happy, it looks beautiful, but it will create a sort of seal. It's so thick, this moss, not big, but very thick and compact that it doesn't allow any air going in. So that's, that's also a thing that I need to uh, keep in mind. Like this one, this one can be taken off the moss. Similar situation, it's the David Sander, Brazzavola. Uh, yeah, I think I had it in bloom, I, I don't even remember. I, yes, I do. Had it in bloom. Just a beautiful new growth here. It's doing fine. My Bino said one of the first that I had. And I have it uh, several times in. I had it several times in bloom, and I see a uh, sheet here sticking out. So I probably will have it in bloom again, and another one over here. I'm not completely sure if you can see that, but there's a sheet as well. This is what I do once they outgrow their pot, especially uh, that one over there. I just grab a bigger pot and put them in there, and you can see it's just uh, starting to take the new space very beautifully. And again, quite some air in there, and I think they're really enjoying it. So that's progress. And then here, what do we have here? A new growth, yes. Fairly young plant. Brazolalia amethyst. And I did have that in bloom for the first time this year. So that's beautiful. I might try to speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Uh, and then we have another cat layer type over there. This is a new one. It's just starting to grow in this setup. There's the tag. Looking promising. Looking promising. And this is a cross with the why not? Cat layer why not? I had it several times in bloom as you can see. Beautiful red, red orange sheet type blooms. And this is the Cucalara. So time to go down a shelf. Look at this, maybe you recognize it already. <laughs> Beautiful, strong new growth of there, over there. And we have another one here. This is my apple blossom. I still keep it, calling it apple blossom, Iwanagawa, apple blossom pink. It's now Jack Foyara something. But anyhow, I, I like uh, Iwanagawa a little bit better, to be honest. Next to it is my apple blossom golden elf. 
sadly I had a spray to spray it and that I think it's a leaf is brown so I now hope that the rest will come out green I had some mealy bugs on them we have another growth here that looks uh, better it's now becoming quite a nice size plant one of my favorites absolutely Ivanagaras here in the back a fairly big one this is my um, uh, yellow burrs it's also Bratavola type and we have the blooms over there uh, let me quickly see if I can fill them film them from this area yeah it's a bit crowded I cannot take it out let me zoom in there we go look at this beautiful there are the yellow bird blooms but we do get more I have I think three directions of growth we have another one here it has a sheet and one over here look at that whoops I'm sorry that's that's a few days off blooming I guess doing well enjoying the net pot look at that the roots more air and moisture and it's doing fine then we have this beautiful uh, golden tang H&R over here still in bloom was also in my update and it's in this spot more air but uh, more room between the pots and holes in there so that is this one then I have this one is is doing okay it looks shriveled but it's um, oh I lost the tag it's uh, not a cat layer type but it's here because it's uh, adapting to the semi hydroponic setup at maxillaria there we go <laughs> Denavolia. my newest orchid over here this shelf I use for uh, transitioning them and then drobium that's also cat layer type this is sadly my xantina not looking happy so I keep it here so I can spray the roots with oral water and seaweed to hopefully get them going again but yeah this one is not happy sadly while we're down here let's have a look this is one of my newest cat layers from Landsbergen the last time I visited them is doing fine you have one new growth here two over there very big pot and there are some roots already coming out next to it the one that has still has a mini box the uh, Centelli lace twinkle and it's adapting nicely but I need constantly need to spray this one sadly for mealy bugs and I fell and that sad little poor Schimberkia I'm not sure if that's going to make it but anyhow let's focus on the cat layer types and this is probably the rarest one that I have and this has the original name this is the Jacovolia or apple blossom Hihi Manu oops I'm sorry for the glare but that's the name and this one started to grow way better at the roots as soon as I did put it in a more general orchid pot so five inch pot I did some holes in there quite some room in here and look what the roots are doing and it has a new growth here and a new growth here that is making a sheet so doing fine then over here oh it's hard to take them out but this one just took off when i did repot it look at this one beautiful we have one new growth there and one there and one there what happened was with this one it just had thrips on the bloom so it didn't bloom and this is by the way <laughs> there is the, the kiwi of uh, v galaxy galaxy but instead probably it had some extra energy because it didn't bloom it started to grow uh, two extra new growths before that i only have constantly one direction and now i had started three beautiful a very positive sign to this new type of setup i think I know not all, not all of them will react like this one, but this one is obviously very happy with it. <laughs> this is a parent of the. Oops, Ethan Garris. <laughs> it's a little bit crowded, I'm sorry. It's the snowflake, frosty. And it's. 
starting to add that beautifully. Sadly, this one didn't progress, but it, 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 I may not have the energy to grow them both. It lo uh, lost the root system, it makes a new one, is perfectly adapting to the new system. Looking forward to blooms on this one, who knows. Then we have that one. This is the Tinger Glow, beautiful new growth. Do we have a sheet? I cannot see it yet, who knows. But it has a nice root system and it has these aerial roots going on over here. So it's doing fine. Then, this is not so happy. This is my Francis Fox, one of them, I have two. But yeah, I'm waiting for new roots, not seeing them yet. And I will repot it as well in a... Um, probably a more that type of pot. Even bigger, bigger pumice and more air. I already did it in a net pot with him, but still not very happy. So who knows, may need a little bit more air. Then, in the back, we have a fairly big one. Now the orchid is a mini, Cattleya, but a nice older plant with a sheet with buds over there and in the back one there. And I think I have another growth somewhere over here. I'm not completely sure at this moment. Um, this is, and it has making new roots. As you can see, this is the tag, the golden boy, a beautiful orange one. Let me try to get it back. Oops, there we go, yeah. Then over here, this is a, a going to be nice, I think. This is my Santa Barbara, oops, Santa Barbara, Santa Showtime. The one with a very, very long spike. Well, it's just starting this spike. It grows crazily long. I have it in bloom every year. But this year, it does make another new growth over here. So that would be awesome to have two spikes. And guess what I did to it? You already saw it probably. New pot, more air in between and with holes. And yeah, the response is uh, good. Very good. Who knows, I'm not completely sure that's the reason why it makes another new growth, but you know, never know, of course. <laughs> in the back we have also the cat that's doing pretty fine, I believe. This is the golden leopards there we are and it has a sheet just finishing up so the buds may come this this normally blooms for me as you can see so i think it will bloom as well and then this one is the chinese doll whoops there we go as you can see it's a very sad new growth but it's there and it does have the leaves let's change it and i can only hope it does, does do better you can see here, the moisture level is quite nice. We still have beautiful green moss on there. But also the air, which is very important. So that one is over there. Let's go uh, one up. And then we have these beauties. My Forbesii. Look at this, beautiful details in there. This one just took off in the system. Some just do like it so much. Let's have a look inside of the pot. Whoops, you can see. Beautiful root growth. These two, this one and this one are the newest growths. Look at how beautiful they are. Here are the older leaves and there are nice fresh green leaves. And we even have one new growth over here. So three directions at least. Maybe another one, I'm not completely sure. But this one is really, really enjoying her life. Let's put her back. Then we have my first Francis Fox, but just, it's growing, but it will not become a nice size plant. So yeah, who knows, maybe one day, but it's growing, so it's, I keep it, of course. Then we have this one, this is my second Cattleya, uh, not, uh, it's <laughs> not completely Cattleya, Castell Schmidt, with beautiful orange uh, blooms. So yeah, these, I had a very, uh, I had a good one, I think, previously, that didn't take it so well, so it died off. I bought a new one with two directions of growth. It did start to open up a bloom, but it didn't com completely uh, grew it out pretty well. It was a little stuck here, so I took it off. Now it's making two new growths, plus the roots look kind of healthy. 
I didn't use this setup, so I hope this is the trick. More opening, a more, more open path, as you can see, and some holes in there. Who knows? This is a tricky one. This is a, this will let me know if, if she likes it or not. <laughs> That's okay. Like I said, I like a puzzle. We've seen some nice roots on this one. This is my Afri uh, African beauty. But it's just not very big. I, I had it in bloom. But um, it's, yeah, the canes do not really get bigger. But I have some progress on the leaves. So yeah, who knows? Then here, a new growth on my sweet orange, Nikom sweet orange. Yeah, similar situation. I have uh, needed more air in there. As you can see, it's not a very big plant. And it's not that old yet, but who knows? I hope I will. Uh, these roots will keep on growing. And then in the back we have my Cattleya, it is called Golden Sunburst. It's a new one. It's just uh, growing in this, oops, in this setup. I have a new growth here and a new growth in the back over here. But yeah, it's just starting to grow roots in here. But a nice open setup for this one as well. And this is probably the oldest one that I have. Um, not the biggest one, but I do have roots again. This one kept losing them, the poor thing. I, this, this, this must be in my collection for five, six, seven years. I'm not, I'm not completely sure. It's a nice white one with uh, with speckles on the blooms. I have no name for it. I really hope to have it in bloom again, so you can see one of my oldest. But you can obviously, if you know, this is one of my oldest. It didn't do well for quite a while, and the new growths are not that big yet. But we have the roots, and I did completely lose them. And I changed the setup. More open, more air, and it looks like it's working. Although it's not winter yet, of course. Then we have the Dawaniana variety Aurea. I did show it in, a, in my update with a picture, because the blooms are not long lasting. I figured out, actually, Michael McCarthy let, did let me know. Look at this, this is the newest growth. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I did find a way to get the roots out, even though it's very close. But yeah, it's doing fine. This is the newest cane. It's the newest cane uh, over here. And this one next to it, actually, is the previous one. Well, you can see the amount of progress here. Doing fine. And I'm happy with it. Oh, this one is a must-have. The blooms are beautiful. Even though it's not long-lasting, they are stunning. And then I have my two why nots. That's the original one, the red one, and this is the Hello Hello Yellow Kitty. I'm sorry, not Hello Kitty. <laughs> Yellow Kitty. So far, so good. Just starting. They didn't have much root on them when I started with them, but they seem to take it. Luckily. These are were on my wish list. Not that easy to get here. I think in the US you can get them uh, almost everywhere. Which, which, how, that's how it goes with the orchids. But these, uh, but I found them. I found them. So those all are over here. Let's uh, go to the shelf above them. Therefore, I need to make myself a little bit taller. But let's give a quick overview. I'm sorry, I cannot zoom out, of course, if I'm so close. Yes, it looks pretty, <laughs> if you ask me. It looks pretty. Let's do a close-up now. The, ah, that was uh, my head, something to... Oh, that's the... To love, yes. But they didn't fall off, luckily. <laughs> Cattleya, wrinkle, something. Cat green, but well, it's more yellow if you ask me. <laughs> I have this for 19, so five years. Um, and now I need to get the tag back, which doesn't work. We have one new growth over here. It blooms all the time for me. And we have another one there, this one. Two directions of growth. It's making new roots. Some will be out of the pot, which is okay, but I need to, I uh, could do a repot on it. Yeah, it's a bivoliate. Uh, I think, not this winter, but the winter before, it did lose the roots, or a lot of them, the old ones. But it did come back and I did give it just a little less water in the pot during the winter. And that seems to work for this already, for this one. So yeah, but uh, soon it will be in bloom. It's just beautiful. In the back. <laughs> How do I reach that one? It's uh, no idea, it's a big pink one. I did get from uh, Landsbergen as well. 
just uh, not that long ago. There's a repot on it, lost its roots, but we have new roots and we have a beautiful new cane over here. It's this one. So it looks looks better, I think. So yeah, I'm sorry, I cannot do close-ups much on these guys. So this is one. The Jurgen and then something. <laughs> um, Michael McCarthy did put uh, pointed out as well. Look at the leaves on the older leaves. They do not look well And I was afraid it was a virus, but luckily these are beautiful. We have some Some moisture over there. That's not from the orchid. It's probably from a spider left over <laughs> And then you know what I mean uh, But look at these leaves beautiful. The cane is beautiful. It's a nice size If you compare it to next year's it's this one so it's slightly bigger. There you go. It did bloom and a beautiful fragrance on this one. And now it's starting, well, at least one new growth over here, but it has an eye there. I was hoping for this one to progress as well. But yeah, nice new root coming. Overall doing fine. And therefore I'm going to leave it one more year in this setup and then I need to change it. It has some aerial roots here but it's doing fine it doesn't look as beautiful as this the back of some old leaves you can see so i'm not completely sure what is wrong with this one but it seems to do better so i'm just going to leave it in the bag that is my happy holidays something glory happy holidays i just needed to speak the tag we have a beautiful new growth this one is also blooming every year so i will expect some blooms on this one beautiful sheet there some happy sap on there, so it should be fine, it should be fine, and it looks quite nice in that pot, look at those roots. Some old roots there, but we have quite some bond of uh, amount of uh, new roots coming, so I think it should be fine. Then next to it, well actually in front of it, we have a very special one I think, it's the Mermeco Cadlea Elegance, oh I'm sorry, Elegance, I was watching the tag. Um, well, first of all, it roots very beautifully in this setup. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, sadly, still one direction of growth with some weeds in it. But these blooms are beautiful and we can see them in the near future. Oh, look at that. Beautiful cane. This is the, no, this is the previous one. It also some size to it. But this one looks a little bit thicker. And this is one I bought from, uh, I saw the, the blooms on a picture and I was like, I'm not completely sure if I'm going to like this. Maybe or maybe not, let's try it. And oh boy, am I happy that I did because these blooms are stunning. One of my favorites, absolutely stunning. The colors are so beautiful. I don't think it has a fragrance or a mild fragrance, maybe. I don't, don't remember, but once again, we can find out pretty soon, I guess. So yeah, that one is living over here. We're almost there. This is the last shelf. It's a shorter shelf. So I hope you enjoyed this video. But yeah, we are now in it. I'm going to finish this one. We have a new growth here uh, with a sheet. And it started to do a little bit better, I think. Well, at least we do get some new roots. We have some in a pot. I just recently repotted, but not that much. And this is a no idea, big wide yellow lip. So it's just a description so I know and the number there, 44, that's uh, how it, I listed it in my notes. No name for it, sadly. We have a new growth on, whoops, on this one there. It's a little bit bushy here. There. Can I read the tag? Yeah, it also has a number, number 19. So that means it's a no ID. But we have roots there. Can you see them? Yes, look at that. Better, much better. If I don't have blooming updates on them, that means that they're not doing that well, but this, these guys seem to do better. And again, both in a similar system. More air, more air. Then in the back we have, <laughs> here we have a white one. It's also a no-name one there. Uh, let, me, let me quickly uh, adjust. So we have a new growth here. Um, let me see if I can reach it. Do we have something? No, it's still, it's not completely open yet. The bivalve, it's a beautiful 
white creamy one if I remember correctly. Oh, it's already starting a new growth, I can see. So I'm not completely sure if it's going to bloom. Can you see that? Yeah, there it is, a new growth. This one wasn't happy. I must admit, it wasn't happy. I see some roots, so I'm not completely sure how it's doing inside of the pot. But you already can see that we have, there's my finger, here, more room there. So yeah, I did change the setup. More air means, uh, more room means more air. There we go. <laughs> so let's go to the next shelf. So that is the smaller shelf over here, and I will grab some uh, over here. Well, especially there's a cat layer. Those are my Ancelia Africanas. And then I have a few more here. So we are almost there. Let's start on the top again. Um, let me adjust this a little bit. There we go. This, well, it's now going over, as you can see. It's the sea breeze. And that is the one with the most longest arrow roots that I have. Look at these guys. Yeah, they are not far from the ground anymore and still growing beautifully. So yeah, that's uh, very happy. But it didn't have much roots left in the pot, so I did a repot on it. Sadly, these stopped growing. Um, yeah, I can only hope. We have some roots going in the pot there. Normally, it, before it did have quite a root system, so I'm not completely sure. Maybe it needed that more air in there. I'm not completely sure, but it, it did, didn't do that bad, actually, with the roots. So let's hope it uh, recovers nicely. So far, it does look pretty, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it will. Then we have new growth here on this one and one there, and there um, must be another one. Yeah, they're in the back. I hope you can see it. There we go. Oops. <laughs> there we go. That part <laughs> is also a new growth. Uh, and this is the um, oh boy, the king of Taiwan. Yeah, there we go. It's the purple one, the huge one. Well, it should be that one. But I didn't have it in bloom yet. So hopefully, let me check. Do we have a sheet on here? Can we see it with the camera? <laughs> yes. There is a sheet. So that's a first, who knows? It, it, was, it, it was in bloom when I bought it, so that's why you see the remaining spikes over here in the sheets. It wasn't my, uh, my blooming. This is my uh, last one. <laughs> Didn't bloom. Who knows, who knows? In the back there, that, that must be a yellow one, I believe. A very large yellow one. I'm talking about this one. Uh, same story, comes from Landsbergen and didn't do well because it's, it lost its roots. We have... Uh, somewhere, yeah, there, <laughs> a new growth on it. This is the, whoops, this is the new growth. And we have, this is a sheet, just a brown sheet. But look how big it is. So that, you can see the, the previous growth there, that leaf. And this is the new, so that's progress. And guess what, it's in a net pot. And we have roots. And it's almost on the edge. So I could do a repot, but I, I, I will wait until it makes a new growth. But it does look better. So who knows, it will make a beautiful flower spike this time. Or some flowers. And then we have this one. This is making buds in there. I hope you can see it. And this is the name. Well, actually, let's get it out of the way. This is a named variety. Amaki Tipmalay. And I did repot it recently. It does do well. It does uh, kind of well for me. I did cut off some old bulbs because it's a fairly old one, one in my collection for a very long time. But it doesn't look as big because I had some leafless old bulbs and I wanted a bit more room in the pot. So I did cut them off. Let me take those sheet pots out of there. Ah, oh, there's another one I can see on my camera. There we go. <laughs> Uh, of course, all oh, these things are horrible. Anyhow, beautiful cut layer. And soon we will have an update on those beautiful blooms. <laughs> Let's go down. Oh, my arm is getting tired um, of holding the camera a little bit too high. Look at this beautiful, strong new growth on this one. I bought this in the same order of the, at the... Uh, the my come by. I'm not completely know the no, name, the, the one that we just saw. Um, I'm terrible with the names, but um, I'm yeah, checking also the tag on this one. This one is also a nice uh, whoops, variety. This is the Prada Green Deluxe. A beautiful fragrance on it, plus a beautiful um, flower. 
and yeah, I think we might see it soon as well, pretty soon. It's not showing buds, but it's working on it, and a beautiful strong leaf. And yes, you can see that the cane is starting to get bigger again. Well, actually, this is the previous one. There you go. So it, it's about the same height, and I think it's just a little bit thicker. Starting this one in a new setup always has a good roots on setup on it, so didn't mind my winters that much, but I needed to up -put it. So that's why I chose a uh, more of a tray that doesn't have the extra holes in it. It's doing fine and it likes it. You can see the roots going in all kinds of direction. But now I have two, three more years of growth room in here, and yet still I always hope that I shoot out more uh, canes. But this one still does warm, most of them, who knows, in the near future. In the back we have another sad one, I'm fighting these roots. <laughs> um, there we go, it is same jade there, Catlea, something same jade. Well yeah, you can see, it's a very sad plant, but it's still there and has some roots. And it's making a new growth, let me zoom in, so that's a good sign. There you can see. So, who knows? New setup, net pot. I didn't have, I don't have the air, uh, the, the holes on the other outer uh, pot. I may want to do that. But it's very easy, you just can change the pot or burn some holes in it. I think they might like that bit of fresh air in there. Then we have, and here she is, the uh, golden peacock. You see, this is a little bit more orange, orange, I'm sorry, orange, orange, but the shape is uh, very similar to uh, the uh, canary, the canary, as you can see. And these start to, will get a little bit more orange as well, I think. Not as bright as these ones, but they are fairly similar. This is the plant itself, all these canes here, two directions of growth, which are both blooming. And this one has quite some roots in there, so it's doing better. And a new growth already starting here. Golden peacock, as you can see, we have new growth here. And we have some here. This were also a, a cluster of new growths. It were there, they were there for about two years, but it didn't progress. This looks like it's growing, I'm not completely sure. So um, let's take that seed pot out of the weeds. There we go. <laughs> but I have some. As you can see, some uh, blooms that are not nicely shaped, as this one, and also this one. Plus the strange behavior of new, new, uh, new growths. I'm not completely sure, this might be virus. And you may hear me talk about it in previous videos, that I'm constantly also losing butts on these guys. And I thought it was the thrips, but now, seeing these blooms and seeing this behavior there, might be a virus. But still it looks okay, so I, I don't share water, so I keep it here. I might repot it and check that, uh, that uh, rhizome. Who knows, that might be an idea, just to see if it has a uh, fusarium or something. I'm not completely sure. In the back, that is probably my biggest Cattleya. And this one needs really, really high light to bloom. And it's only once in bloom every year, like most Cattleyas. We have a new growth here and in the back, one over there. There is the tag. I was looking for the tag. Yeah, can I get it out? Yes, this makes my life a little bit easier. <laughs> this is it. Shialin New City. So yes, it might be that you have seen it in some videos in bloom. I hope it will bloom this year again. It may skip last year, I'm not completely sure, but normally it blooms very well as you probably can see now. Let me check my screen. Yeah, it has bloomed previous times, in previous uh, years, several times, there we go, I'm sorry for my bad English over there. <laughs> and see, it's growing outside of the pot, but it's okay, so really enjoys the setup. I have quite some roots in there, but you can see also, this doesn't have extra holes in it, but still some room there. But I'm not completely sure if it really matters if you don't have holes in your pots that can let the air in. But just this, otherwise it didn't fit. It's, it's basically going in a bucket, so that's why there's some extra air. But in this case it doesn't do much. But this one, once again, doesn't mind it luckily as much. 
And this is my profile. If you see the picture on my profile of uh, YouTube, we have a close-up of the lip and it's from this orchid. Because I love the details on it. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's go down here. We're almost there, you guys. Uh, this is the magic tree. It's a new trick over here. And it started to become bigger, as you probably can see. This is the last growth. It did make a sheet, but it didn't bloom. I had it in bloom before. But this new growth is uh, also already way bigger than... Oh, yeah, quite, quite, quite bigger than this one. <laughs> I did repot it. And, uh, yeah, I believe I have some uh, extra holes in that pot as well. This is my gift. This is... No, it's not the name tag of this one. It's the final blue. Yeah, final blue. Here we go. This bloom... This uh, cane bloomed. And it's from a viewer. And we have a new one over here. And look at that. There is something coming there. Beautiful bloom. It looks a bit like the sea which we just saw. The one with these ginormous long roots. <laughs> so that is there. Then we have some. Uh, this is Prostechia now. Marie. I did have it in bloom with four spikes. Best blooming so far. Nonetheless, it doesn't have a great root system. So I did change it in a net pot with extra holes. Who knows? Like the one in the back, and that is the Encyclia Tempus variety Alba which bloomed for a very long time. It's now done blooming and it's making new growth there. But you can see the moss over there. That's what I, what I re was referring to earlier. I need to get out a few. I have, I have a bit of holes here, but get some moss out because these will uh, act, that, that moss will act like a um, shield, a lid, you can call it almost. So let's see, these are Encyclias, this is the Black Comment over here, doing very well, also a nice setup, nice air, you can uh, air a whole <laughs> net pot, and oops, I'm sorry, two new growths, and we have the green horn one, it's currently in bloom, as you can see, big net pot, a room in between there, and I hope that I don't make you dizzy, but here are the roots, some of the roots, and some weeds, of course. <laughs> Those are here. I have a uh, <laughs> Fanda root in my eye. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Two new growths here, and I have another new growth here, and another one over there. And I believe another one, so quite some new growths. This one is really doing well. This is the whew, Epidendrum Clare Clare Clearing. So sorry, I think I'm not completely sure if it's still called uh, Epidendrum, but you should find this one under this name. And this is technically my oldest orchid that I have. This is a division of one or uh, an orchid that I had about 20 years ago. So this one is special, it's just my oldest, it's not the biggest, but it's my oldest. And these canes are not all uh, 20 years, of course, but it's, it's a part of that plant that makes it so special, I think. At least for me. And it's doing uh, fine, as we can see. And then we have this uh, Encyclia Chocolata variety, Chocolata, in the back there. It's doing fine as well. We have new growths over there and there. And then we have another... No, it's, it's a Encyclia variety cross with the tempest uh, the grower said but he didn't wasn't completely sure so I'm, I, I'm neither <laughs> but it's a no ID and but it's beautiful it has beautiful uh, blooms and it does very well as you can see yeah beautiful new roots there open pots so yeah I think I might be on something that works for my um, environment for these guys who knows Beautiful sheet here, beautiful sheet here with some buds. Whoops, I'm a bit shaky, but it was because of the leaves. Um, I think that is a new growth as well. And I think you want to know the name of this. And I'm <laughs> looking for the tag. Cattleya uh, Cream Yellow. <laughs> How about that for a name? That means it's no ID. 
but it has cream yellow blooms. It should have a number on there that makes my uh, finding it in my notes a little bit easier, but I did forget to put a number on. And the first root is going for the air and the moisture of the year. So yeah, this... Uh, I'm not completely sure. No, I don't think this blooms, as you can see. So it's been a year. I bought it in bloom, but it's a very pretty one. I, I know, I remember that uh, Hillbilly loved it, uh, this one as well. Speaking of which, by the way, Hillbilly, uh, Paula from Hillbilly Arcus, I just saw your video on the Cattleyas. So it happens to be that I had a, a request on mine. But yeah, if you if you enjoy this video, you definitely should go over uh, to Hillbilly Arcus. Oh boy, she has some pretty ones, very large plants. And she grows them completely different than I do. So uh, it might be very nice to have a visit at her channel as well. Nonetheless, this was one of the, her favorites. I'm, I'm not completely sure. I think when she sees the blooms, she remember. Beautiful, uh, beautiful little uh, creamy yellow blooms. Next to it, uh, my saddest looking Encyclia type, Encyclia cordigera, cordigera. Uh, it did bloom, but it's good blooming, and uh, I did repot it in this net pot not that long ago. Why did I put a tag back, I think? Well, last year, November. So it's coming back to life, but yeah, it was almost dead, as you probably can see on the leaves. But there is a new growth, that one over there, and we have a new growth over here. And with new growths normally come new roots. So let's hope she, she will go come back to us let's hope and this is my fairly new one oh, i'm sweaty you guys it's warm also from landsberg and in, oh, the million box on those horrible this is also an, in this is the radiata encyclia uh, prostechia radiata is now i'm checking the tag in there finally look at the amount of roots it was that very large one, still, well, it's still very large, but you can see. It did take some uh, energy of the plant. Oh, and it was, I think it was a bit mistreated during transport. Not at Landberg itself, but you can still see. I still have the mealy bugs on them. Probably they are dead. I did, I, I uh, keep spraying this one, but finally the new growth start to grow again, so it will be happier pretty soon. That one is over here. Then I have my Lelia Anceps Alba. It's, com it's a little bit different, it's in uh, spike again. It has, uh, I think it's more pyloric. Uh, we just saw, uh, not just, uh, last year. I, I'm not really a big fan of pyloric, so it's still here, but I might give this away to somebody who really enjoys it a little bit better than I do. And then we have another, um, Laelia and Seb's type over here. It's the variety Guerrero. Oh, I'm sorry, Guerrero. Sadly, never had this in bloom. Just not sure. But it uh, has some roots, not a massive uh, root grower. New growth here and a new growth here. But yeah, there's nothing, uh, no sheet coming yet. Who knows? But yeah, it would be nice to have that one someday in bloom. So that one is a uh, yeah, we have a new root here, so it's starting to enjoy the setup better. More open setup, again, it's just uh, the first time that I have it in a net pot. Maybe uh, that was the, uh, is the trick to get it to bloom. So yes, I hope you are still with me, you guys. I'm not completely sure at this moment how long this video uh, did get. But uh, now you have a general idea of the Cattleya and the Cattleya types that I'm growing. Uh, qu quite a few, but I wanted to make this video and I think uh, especially if things are not completely doing well, the information uh, um, that you can share about it and, and uh, your uh, experience actually with it is beautiful if you have a YouTube channel. So that's why I'm taking the time and trying to describe what I'm working with, what I'm seeing and what it sort of is telling me and how I try to, to uh, work with that information and come up with different plans without changing the setup completely. 
uh, that's something I like and I hope you like it too even though you might not grow them in this type of setup it still might be information that that maybe is nice to think about and and may inspire you on, on certain uh, different ways that's how I grow them as well so I watch growers that do grow them in bark or a spectrum moss and yet still I get some ideas from from them um, yeah, I can only hope that you enjoyed it. Once again, it's a little bit, a bit longer probably, but uh, I really, uh, really uh, I like uh, making these videos. Uh, so one more time, if you have any requests, please let me know. Uh, maybe I did forget something, please let me know as well. Uh, the only thing that I can say, but you probably should know it by now, sort of, if you follow me longer, is that I feed my orchids low and I feed them all the same. So these get layers to get the same amount of fertilizer as my Miltonias, Miltoniopsis. Every Wednesday morning I water my collection besides the Vendas. Those get watered on uh, Saturdays, but the rest is always getting watered on the Wednesdays, the Wednesday mornings, because that is the day that I have, uh, then I have a day off. Uh, so I have the time to order them. You may think with such a collection it may take quite a while. Well, not that long. If you consider that I have 460 plus orchids growing in self-watering, it takes me about two to three hours max to water all of them. So that's not that long, I think. And I only have to water them once a week. You will get a general idea of how much your orchids take, how much uh, the amount of water. Um, so. Yeah, if you get that experience uh, during uh, growing them, the, the, during the years that you grow them, uh, it will get easier and easier, I think. Um, so yeah, in winter, it's the amount of parts per million is around uh, 30 up to 40 max, and in summer it's from 50 up to 80, sometimes 100 parts per million. I have a fertilizer video, so I will link it as well. I, that is what I could think of uh, care-wise. So I hope I could uh, answer some uh, questions you may have, uh, Wanda, or other viewers. Uh, thank you so much. It was a beautiful video to make. I really hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did and you didn't already subscribe to my channel, please uh, consider subscribing. Give it a thumbs up and you may want to share it uh, on, on Facebook or whatever social media uh, you are on. Uh, maybe there are some more people interested in this, uh, this video or these types of videos. Thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye!